we go today. So um, I'd just like to say to everyone who has joined us today, thanks very much for joining to another Toto Community Webinar. Um, today we are going to be talking to the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman. Um, and we're really lucky because we're joined by Sean France today and also by Roz from Chambry. Um, I'll do a little introduction in a second to both the speakers. So just to let you know that this session is being recorded um, and it's available, it will be available in the Toto community afterwards. It'll also be on YouTube so you can go and watch it there or you can also share it with your colleagues if you like. Um, oh, I think we're jumping ahead a little bit. Um, so just as an introduction, um, Sean, would you mind introducing yourself today? Yeah, no problem at all. So hi, everybody. I'm sorry you can't see me. I don't want to break anything else on the system today. It's not my friend. We normally use um, Microsoft Teams. So um, um, my God, what's the name of it? Um, Zoom. Zoom, there we go. Uh, <laughs> completely gets com completely new. So, hi everybody. My name's Sean France. I'm the Learning and Organisation Development Manager at the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman. So, my responsibility in this organisation is to try and help and create a learning culture within our organisation. And my particular focus is digital. Um, so, hence the reason I'm talking to you today. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Sean. And Ros, would you mind saying hello? Hello. Yes. So, uh, my name is Ros. I work with Chambery Learning. We're a partner. Uh, I've worked with Totra in some capacity or another for about eight years now. It's a great platform. I love, love working on it, especially with customers like Sean. Brilliant. Thanks so much. And Sean, if we just have a quick look at what we're going to cover today. Yeah, certainly. So um, today I'm just going to share with you our experiences, really, of how we have been using Tatara to help empower our staff. And it's been really focused on uh, the full uh, cycle, so skills, knowledge and behaviours. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how we've integrated and what integrations we've got with different platforms, different resources to try and get the best learning experience. Um, and also to just showcase our um, NHS complaint standards training that we have launched uh, this year and um, so we're a public sector organization and um, so we don't sell anything um, but what we do is want to try and create learning cultures within the organizations that within our remit um, and one of those things uh, we're looking at is uh, complaint handling so I'll talk to you a little bit more about that shortly uh, any lessons learned we've got uh, and then finish off by just giving you some things that we're going to be working on in the future keep, to keep it developing. <clears throat> Thanks Sean and if you do have questions today as well for Sean you can throw those up and we will go come to them. Okay, so Sean, just as a background, so if people aren't aware of the PHSO, um, could you tell us, tell us all about your organisation and what it does, why it stands for and why it exists really? Yeah, so full title, Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman, but as you can see, that's a bit of a mouthful. So yeah, PHSO for sure, we'll be referring to it as. So we provide a free public service um, and it's a focused around complaint handling. So we are the final stage of a complaint handling process for both central government and for NHS uh, complaints. Um, so you'll go through the internal process, for example, with the NHS and they will provide you with a final decision. Uh, we would then, if you're still not happy, you can bring that complaint to ourselves and then we would look at that independently so we don't take sides we're not part of government uh, we are a publicly funded organization and um, so that means that we can be that independent voice and we hold leaders to account and organizations to account if there have been um, incorrect processes or maladministration um, if they find in their favour then unfortunately sometimes things do happen so for example NHS can be you're taken off a doctor's register all the way up to avoidable deaths uh, and then th sometimes unavoidable deaths do happen and it isn't it's been unavoidable just because of the person's medical si um, situation etc um, but like I said fa that final stage of that complaints process and we look at it independently we also cover government things um, um, so central government, not local government, because that's a different ombudsman. Thanks very much, Sean. And where, where are you speaking to us from today? Uh, so we're based in Manchester. Our head office is Manchester. We've also got a site in London. Um, but yeah, I'm in Manchester today. And what's the weather like in Manchester, Sean? It's Manchester. It was, I'm not, I can't see a window right now, but I'm going to go. It's a 90% chance of rain. Brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so, Sean, sure, let's just sort of rewind the clock a little bit. So, before you implemented Totara, what was your learning offer looking like around four years ago? Yeah, so I joined the organisation just over five years ago now. And when I started, it was very traditional classroom based training. We did full day sessions um, or half day sessions. We, we had a learning management system. Uh, we didn't really utilise it. And the 
we used our HR system to record training events. We used Outlook to manage those training events, but the learning management system was sat there in the background. Uh, we did a little bit of uh, e-learning. So we just did two courses for new starters uh, and an induction and everything else was kind of like ad hoc and just managed sporadically uh, so one of my jobs when I came into the organization is to just try and mature our digital learning offer okay so just trying to, I like the way you phrase that you just tried to do that a little bit so one of the things you, <laughs> That's all task. yeah just just try to do that and okay so one of the ways you decided to do that was to partner with Totoro and with Chambery so if I just make a quick sort of question really why did you decide to use Totoro as your sort of technological solution really yeah, so we, um, as a publicly funded organisation, we need to make sure that we're using our money wisely. And so what we wanted to do is make sure that we got a platform that met us, uh, our current needs, but also our future needs. And so we've got some really strong ambitions within our organisation. Um, so what we did is we tendered for an external LMS consultant to come in uh, and work with our organisations that are in remit. So the NHS and government departments worked internally with our different internal stakeholders and our learners to find out what it is that they want and what it is that we need uh, for, for an LMS in the future. Um, and so they then provided us with a few names, a few providers, uh, and Tataro was one of those. Um, I will be really honest, until you got the multi-tenancy feature, that wasn't something that uh, we, we were able to do, but we put in right at the, at the good time to introduce that. So that meant that you were then going to meet our needs for now and in the future. Brilliant. Thanks, Sean. And you also decided to, to work with Chambery. So what made that um, decision to partner with, with Chambery? Again, similar circumstance. Public sector went through an entire tender. If anybody does work in the public sector, they know how fun those sorts of things can be. Um, and what we did is we um, got suppliers to come back to us and pitch essentially what it is that they can offer. Chambry have a huge amount of experience within the NHS field and that's one that area of focus for ourselves um, but also um, the reporting that it goes above and beyond to what Tatara provides so that was a real benefit to us uh, and with it being a organisation that um, you're of a certain size we're not lost in there they do really value us as a, as a company to work for and as an organization to work for so we get that real good relationship building and they start to understand what it is that we want and our desires for the future thanks sean um so just if you're new to totoro you're trying to learn more about totoro and um, typically people organizations will come and partner with um a, a provider um, and in this case um the, the provider is chambry learning solutions uh, and for chambry today we have ros who's just going to give us a quick introduction as to um what chambry stands for and what chambry does really yeah hi thanks i, I mean that, that was great sean i should just leave it at that but um <laughs> Yeah, sort of what we've always tried to do is to um, really emphasize the relationships with our customers. So um, it's a kind of mission statement. We promise to continually develop our services to meet and exceed customer expectations. Um, founded in 2012, and uh, our market is predominantly public sector and NHS and healthcare. Um, but we are trying to diverge from that a little bit. Um, but certainly over 50% of our customers are NHS trusts or, or things related to that. Slides a bit more on some of our priorities. So organizationally, some of the things we focus on are customer care, uh, cost effectiveness, um, processes, ease of access, innovative technology, and as Sean mentioned, compliance and reporting. Um, lots and lots of the uh, plugins and extensions that we've developed for Totra are in that space. So um, there's you know a few sort of key reports. Certainly, the NHS areas kind of really need. So we made those kind of hit one button to get that report out. Um, and we focus on your needs and making it work. Um, we're able to do a lot of things with Totra. I mean, it's an incredibly versatile platform. Um, the way Sean and the HSO are using it is really, really interesting. And that's true across our customer base. Everyone's got slightly different needs and slightly different ways of using the platform. So our role is really to work with you for, to make it work for your use case. Thanks, Ros. Um, and Sean, so we come back to sort of your... Um, strategy really in your vision so when you started about five years ago did you sit down and just think okay what do we need and how are we going to get there or how did you develop a strategy and, and your vision so we made sure that we we're aligned, aligned to our organizational strategy and aim so working really closely with business the organizational key like senior leaders um, we also wanted to say what we wanted to do as an organization and um, so where our current gaps are what we currently don't do very well uh, and as you can see from our strategy, um, so we've got three 
organizational objectives this is a brand new one so this is a, a refreshed one from last year uh, but it was along the similar lines from when we started uh, and as we can see there one of the th key things that we're aiming to achieve in objective three is to create a continuous learning culture um, and and contribute to that to the public services well we need that within our organization if we're asking for other organizations to do so um, also around making sure that our people have the skills knowledges and behaviors because we've said uh, that we want them to have provide a high quality Quality, empathetic and timely service they need the skills knowledge and behaviors to be able to do that great thanks Sean so if we if we take a look at some of those um, strategies and objectives and think about how you're starting or you are meeting those and um, we can have a quick look at some of your um, current offerings and, and who is this current offering for um, so this is our offer across our organization so um, we we mentioned earlier about having our LMS with two e-learning modules on it and everything else kind of being managed off our system. This is all now being managed on our system, so uh, or through the my the the what we call my learning, so through Tatara. Um, now the main thing to say about that is that we do use the full talent experience platform or we're starting to so we currently have learn and then we're starting to explore into to the other aspects um, of um, the Tatara offer um, but it is across our organization so we've implemented invested in technology we've invested it in um, career development so introduced mentoring and coaching which is not the system isn't the focal point but it is there to support them and it is there to be that one-stop shop uh, our leadership and management programs are all managed through our learning uh, LMS uh, and then creating user generated content action learning sets community to practice again all being managed through the LMS different audiences for different topics but we've got a plethora of different um, resources out there to help people start to have that uh, investment in learning. Brilliant thanks Sean if you had to pick out any of these as um, strategies that you think are working really well at the moment for example your onboarding or micro learning is there anything that you're particularly proud of? Um, let me think. I think our job shadowing scheme's really um, taken off quite well. So we want to um, promote squiggly careers. If anybody's seen that web uh, that podcast, so job shadowing, getting people an opportunity to look and 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 learn about other parts of the organisation. Again, managed through the LMS, people can apply for that. They can find out more a little bit a little bit more about the different um, organisations parts of the organisation. Um, so that's been really useful. We're just about to launch our new leadership and management program. That's all going to be a through um, like tailored through dashboards and things like that on the LMS. So we're going to look quite fancy. Um, but really, that's underpinned all of that is our digital learning framework. So an investment from the organisation to progress and we've got like a three-year plan uh, of how we can develop our digital competence in learning thanks Sean. oh these are uh, was a squiggly career that sounded interesting yeah squiggly What's careers yeah there's a there's a ted talk on it it's really interesting um how in the olden days i'm going to use an inverted uh, like brackets um it used to be that you had the same job for your own entire life you may be working two or three organizations in the same industry whereas now you go into different uh, sectors and uh, and it's those transferable skills that help you um which is very different to what our parents might have done it's brilliant thank you if anyone else is uh, aware of squiggly careers or you're trying to progress those squiggly careers like feel free to put that in the chat and talk about how you're doing that um but that's great thanks sean um and if you would sort of give us a little walkthrough of, of your um lms or your platform how does it currently look and what is it what does it look like for the audience yeah so we've it's it's grown massively um since we started so we've, we're starting to get some feedback that um we want to make it a bit more simple um so because as you naturally grow as an organization we've started to add more things onto it and we've just not really thought about the user experience so we we're about to, to embark on a piece of work to try and make it a lot more user friendly and it's that the functionality is there it's just that we've like grown massively since in the last four years uh, from a learning offer and um, so this is an example of our going to be of our home page so we've got the ability to really tailor this and this is through the dashboard dash, dashboard functionality you can have different tiles different size tiles to really demonstrate what it is uh, so we're trying to simplify it so that it's really user friendly for people brilliant if i move on to the next one 
yeah so this is the library essentially and you can use interactive well we've started to use gifs to make them really engaging and then we've used different infographics etc uh, to try and make it really clear you can see that they've got the title there but underneath that you can add different information so we've said what type of content it is what uh, and what type of topic it is so you might see on the first one it's a learning lab which is our voluntary uh, learning program within our organization so you can really tailor it to how you want it to, to look and um, how easily are people finding things as well when they use the catalogue, Sean? Uh, well, our catalogue's grown massively, so from two to nearly a thousand resources now. So there's a, there's a huge amount on there. They've got quite a lot of different ways. So we use different um, ways of tailoring and, and focusing the content. So you can do that using different um, search criteria. Um, so they do find it quite well. Uh, you've just got a bit of be really honest on top of your um, on top of your management and curation of content to make sure that things are always relevant. But that's like any other LMS. Brilliant, thanks, Sean. Um, if we look at the next one. Um, so this is another example of a, a dashboard that I was mentioning. So we have hundreds of casework resources. So caseworkers are, are essentially our operational staff. So they're the people that deal with the the calls and deal with the complaints that we receive and they have as you can imagine covering the NHS and government uh, there's a huge amount of knowledge that they need to be able to have at their fingertips and what we wanted to do is keep it really condensed and um, so we decided to break it down to these these areas so that people can find things as easily as possible. Thanks Sean and what types of learning resources do you have on your platform as well is it mostly courses or do you have other things as well? So we have courses. We're just starting to introduce social learning through uh, our communities of practice. So we're going to have collaboration spaces. We have um, infographics. We can do assignments. You can do um, quizzes. Um, there's the typical seminars or workshop based, but e-learning videos, all the things that you would expect. But we have a, quite a wide range of stuff. And then mostly links to other areas and internal things on our, uh, on our um, content database. To SharePoint. Okay, thanks, Sean. <clears throat> and obviously, um, to make all this work, you're using a lot of different um, pieces of functionality through Toto. Um, and I wonder if you wanted to call out any, for example, before you mentioned multi tenancy, how's that working at the moment? And uh, are there any other feature functionalities or pieces of functionality you'd like to call out here as well? Yeah, so we've, uh, I think main ones multi-tenancy integration with NMS teams so people don't have to move away from the learning management system I think that's been working quite well for people so that they can share content directly on teams if you have that integration um, and yeah we've got single sign on anything else we want to bring out so multi-tenancy I think it probably is one of the one of the better features for us as an organization so we talked about the NHS and we're going to talk to them to, about them in a little bit of time um, but we need them to have a separate area a completely closed off area that they can access and um, so that the that they can't see our internal content and there's no mix of learners and that that for us was really important and one of our requirements uh, we talked about dashboards already and yeah i think that i think that's the main things really so if you're completely new to the system sean you didn't know what the term multi-tenancy meant what is it if you could break it down even more into a bit of a nutshell what, what does it what does it mean to you multi-tenancy Oh, it feels like a test this now. So I'll try. <laughs> I'll try my best. Um, so, yeah, for, for multi-tenancy. So, for example, it's an extended enterprise, essentially, is how the, uh, it's described. So if you you have your internal learners. So for me, our organization, it's our caseworkers and our, and our um, uh, other staff support staff. Um, so you have them in what is essentially one area of the system. But we want to train the NHS. So what we do is we set up essentially a separate, it's all connected, a separate site with site managers, et cetera, and, and then they can access different areas. So we create a whole new learning environment for them, essentially, with their own courses, their own branding, their own themes. So it, it feels PHSO, but it's got a very different look to it. So it aligns to we know it's the NHS site. OK, so I think we'll give you a pass for that answer. Thank you. <laughs> That's good. That was a great answer. Thank you. Um, and if anyone has any questions about any of the functionality, so um, uh, Tony's asking, can you give us more detail on the MS Teams integration with Toto? I don't think there's anything you want to say on that right now, um, Sean, otherwise we can come back to that question. Yeah, so so we've got an integration with MS Teams. So there is an app that you can have onto your MS Teams site. So your RIT helped us with that. Um, but they've also got um, the integration with the ability to like create Teams links on uh, to, directly from Tatara. Um, so 
there's those two different integrations and both of them have been really useful so you don't have to if you like my organization has a, a shared mailbox and a group of people that can help create events you can all create them from one event so that you can do uh, from one account so we've got like a training account so we all log into that and create teams links from there and uh, so it means that people can use all the functionality of teams we know that it's got challenges around if you're not a host and you can't do breakout rooms and things so that's one of the integrations the other integration is that app so if you have the app you're in a chat with somebody they go oh i'm really stuck with this you can go oh have you seen this resource and it comes directly up from there and just search for it Great, thanks uh, so much, Sean. Um, so what we're talking about at the moment mostly is your internal use. We've just touched on multi-tenancy there to work with NHS staff, but just from an internal perspective, um, how are things going with your platform at the moment? Yeah, so um, as you can see from the statistics, so the left hand, the lighter blue figure, or teal colour figure, I'm going to say, um, is our employee engagement scores uh, since 2017. The one on the right was our LND scores, um, so the LND engagement scores. So as you can see, over the years since we started to introduce digital learning, it has massively increased. We're just about to do our next um, next. Um, staff survey so I'm hoping that it's gone even further um, so when I started this and started to introduce the digital learning side of it in 2019 um, we're about one third just over one third of our employees who thought that uh, our L&D offer was great we've now moved up to just a below 66 percent now so two-thirds of our organization think it's it provides them what they need it helps them with career development it gives, it's providing a good service and we get that anecdotally all the time at the moment saying i can't believe what offer you provide for your staff um, and it's all managed through the lms <clears throat> great thanks so much sean um, so if we move on away from sort of your internal um, offering and move on to the NHS complaints um, standards, um, we have a video here which may or may not play sound. Um, Can you hear that? Yeah. Sometimes things go wrong and there are times when people who are brave and concerned will make a complaint. But how can we make sure that we handle those complaints well and that we learn from them to improve what we do. The public have told us what they would like to happen when they make a complaint, but there is no single set of standards for those working in the NHS to follow when responding to concerns and complaints. This means that everyone has a different experience. We ask the NHS, government departments, members of the public and advocacy organisations what they thought an ideal set of complaint standards could look like. They said it should learning and improvement. Encourage people to actively seek and share feedback. Be thorough and fair so that complaints are listened to and dealt with consistently. Be balanced and accountable. We use these principles to start building a complaint standards framework for the NHS. The framework will set out a shared vision for complaint handling and how complaints can help improve services. Okay, thanks, Sean. So I know that we've just watched a video there, but um, perhaps you could just explain that in a nutshell as to as to what what, what really you're, we're trying to achieve here. Yeah, so as an organisation, we were seeing that there was quite a disparity between different trusts that you might go to um, for complaint, complaint handling, some followed great best practice, some didn't, uh, and that's the NHS as an organisation, so you should be getting the same experience no matter which trust that you're dealing with. Um, ultimately, what our aim for this complaint standards is for us to receive less complaints, because that means that the complaints are being dealt with in the right way for first hand. Um, so what we decided to do is introduce these complaint standards, which all NHS organisations can align and work towards. Uh, and then as a result of those standards, we worked with the NHS in, uh, to, to create those and get that single set of, st set of standards. We then, well, we need to train people of how, how to follow these standards. So that's hence the reason for the multi-talency. We've introduced this new uh, piece of uh, training to our organ NHS organisations to train them up on how to follow the complaint standards. Brilliant. Thanks, uh, Sean. We're just getting a quick question about um, sort of the number of people really that work with you, Sean, in, in the L&D team. Yeah, so we are an organisation of uh, just short of 600 and there are about 
11 of us that work within the L&D team. Um, so that covers not just digital. So we've got our senior managers, et cetera. Um, but we've also got our people that look after our operational training and the trainers that support them. We've got our um, leadership and management and professional skills and personal skills side of things. And then we've got our digital arm. In my direct team, there are four of us um, that work directly on like managing the system, designing content and so on. Great. Thanks, Sean. Um, and just coming back to working with the NHS. So um, if you look, oh, sorry, um, just talking about external learners again, I wonder if you could provide us some more information about exactly how you went about this project and about creating this as a learning solution as well. Yeah. So obviously part of that um, tender activity was, was, this was in fact a, a key focus for it. Um, so once we knew that we'd got the, the platform that we, would support us for it, um, we worked with the NHS to create that, that content. And then we looked at how best to supply that content to these, uh, to the different organizations. So we decided that we'd offer a range of options to best suit people's needs. So we do a face-to-face -face course and um, we do a, um, live online courses similar to this today uh, and we also do a self-paced course and we created two topics so we created our early resolution course and we created our more in-depth closer look course and um, so the example that you can see on screen is one of our e-learning modules so if you decided to do the self-paced module that would be uh, what you would go through um, and then we've tested it road tested it got feedback from the nhs before we decided to go live and then once we were happy with it we got it cpd uk certified um, so that the that we know that it's meeting a good standard i know a lot of the nhs uh, work off cpd hours etc so it meant that they can use these hours towards their their pro continuous professional development thanks sean and when you're building the courses and things like that what type of features are you using in totara to build those courses yeah so we've created used dashboards again to make it a really tailored experience to how we wanted it to do uh, we created courses themselves and in those courses you've got the option for seminars we've created e-learning scorm files and um, so we have created feedback forms and certifications so that they can then add the, um, learners can then upload their certificate to their own learning management system so they've got a record of it um feedback forms have been really good anything else i think oh quizzes and assessments so that we can we can test people's knowledge and understanding of those and then we've used documentation etc that can all be hosted on tatara to to be able to um refer back to should they need to at a later point great thanks sean and are you getting any feedback at the moment from from the nhs about how this is working um yeah, the f feedback is that people want it because we, we've with it we started it in April this year and we've got over over 500 learners now on our books so it's definitely wanted in the NHS people that have been attending have um have provided great feedback and we've used the feedback forms on Tatara to kind of record that and manage any any potential issues or any concerns that people might have um so yeah nobody's nobody's really had any problems I think we've been a victim of our own success really we're trying to keep up with the demand now uh, and try and get in as many people through the training as possible. Brilliant, thanks Sean. Um, Rodrigo's asking, can you elaborate on why people upload their certificates to the LMS? Um, so that, what I mean by that is not our certificate, so we have a certificate on our um, system so that is automatic they complete the course they receive a certificate what I mean is the NHS uh, like to have evidence and things like that uh, for their learners to attend so we created a certificate it's created and then they, they can upload it to their own LMS so that they've got a record in their own organizations because our two LMSs don't speak to each other um, ours is independent so we need them to be able to have a, a mechanism for sharing what they've done and how many CPD hours they've got so that then is how we do it through a certificate. Thanks, Sean. And at the start of the session, you talked a little bit about some space learning as well. I wonder if you could touch on that a bit and what you meant by that. Yes, yeah, certainly. So we're just uh, about to start using, uh, we just launched, sorry, um, our social learning uh, aspect. So that's the, uh, the engage elements of it. So we're using collaboration spaces for our coaches. So we've int recently introduced uh, qualified coaches into our organization uh, and what we're finding is that once they've done the, the, the qualifications they're not really collaborating or not really sharing experiences not developing the skills as much as they possibly could do so we've um, implemented collaboration spaces uh, through um, Tatara to be able to um, 
share those that knowledge, ask for help, share resources so they can continue developing. And it's not all in a formal setting. Brilliant. So you're combining your sort of formal learning through Tota Learn with your informal learning and communities of practice through Tota Engage. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Sean. Um, and if you were going to give yourself maybe some things that you, you, you've you learned or if you wanted to provide advice to other people about things you've learned whilst you've been creating this um, experience, what would you, what would some of those lessons be? Um, so yeah, three, three big ones for us, content curation. So what we found is that making sure that all the content is up to date as much as possible and that it all really aligns um, and that they complement each other. Um, we grew hugely, very quickly, our, our resources. So making sure that they're really succinct and effective but cater for different learning styles i think it's a massive learning curve for us um it also mentions like people analytics so there's a lot of reports on there um we want to get better at making decisions based off what people want and need so we've just re uh, we've, we've been using um our declared interest reports to schedule content um off base of what people wanted um, so that what their interests are um, previously before using all those reports we would just go oh what, what do people want to learn about um, and we didn't really have much data behind it so the people analytics side it's definitely we can get stronger we're nowhere near perfect but it's something that has definitely been a learning curve for us uh, and then the final one sorry to interrupt is just non-learning content the, the the platform has some really great functionality and what we find is people wanted to add yoga sessions onto their or focus groups and as much as we want people to use it we want it to be the right content on there so that that people know what it's there for and don't let it that muddy the waters that's great thanks sam and could you expand on that people analytics piece for example is there one example you could provide of a report that does that well so i think the declared interest report um that we've got i mentioned so that lets us see people to register what they're interested in we can schedule off that basis another report is what shambri provide is like the feedback report so currently feedback of oh, oh, how it was previously is all our feedback um, data was all separate so you'd have to go into a specific course whereas this now allows us to align it into one and we can see an overall theme for all of our content and all of our resources so we've got consistent feedback forms across all of our courses so it allows us to go okay what what's a really top course what do really people really like what do we want to do what is specific about that course that we can then start to mirror into other courses and that's something that we couldn't do before Brilliant. Thanks, Sean. And if people wanted to know more about that in the future, could they contact you perhaps on the community and, and ask some more questions about that? Happy to for people to reach out. It's all learning and it's all about um, experiences. So I, we can definitely learn from other people as well. So I'd be interested to hear what people have to say. Thanks very much, Sean. Um, OK, and so what's next for the project? So we're just about to launch 360, uh, which is a big one for our manager program. So that's all we've been managed online. We used to use an external provider for that. So the fact that we can do that on our LMS is really useful. Um, because we've just started these communities of practice user generated content, which is not something that we've had before. Uh, and that also gives us the introduces uh, through the perform feature, uh, sorry, the engage feature AI. So making recommendations of courses, again, something that we've not done. So they're probably some big ones for us. Um, but yeah, lots, lots in the plan, lots in the pipe work um, and looking forward to seeing what else we can do with the system. And um, Sean, if if someone was at, or someone else was trying to do the shift, so typically you might have a traditional organisation that would have the L&D department deciding on the content that people should learn perhaps in um, unison with the HR department. But if people are trying to create their own content, like is that quite a big shift? And, and how do you help to sort of manage that change? Um, I think people are sharing it anyway. So whether they're doing it through the LMS or, or not, people are oh I've seen this resource and sharing it with their team so it's really good that we can see what that is um so if we get encourage people to do it through the content 
they are all through the system, we can go, oh, actually, that's a really great resource. We can then pull that into ourselves. So it is a bit of a shift. What we're doing personally is doing it slow and steady. We're not doing a big one to the entire organization. We're going to do it in pockets of areas, get feedback, get results, uh, see what benefits it has, and then start to introduce it further out. So, yeah, I think sometimes we think we want to go big bang with everything and everybody gets that opportunity. Whereas I think we're just we're a cautious organization, but hence what we do. do. So we're just being a bit cautious with releasing it and seeing how it works. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, sort of slow and steady rather than just to everyone all at once. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Thanks, Sean. Um, just to say, um, if anyone has any questions for Sean, feel free to think of those now. Um, I'm just going to talk about some other upcoming events. So next week, we're actually talking to a BSH um, and their academy um, and, and how they're working with Totoro and Cortexa to train over 25,000 learners. And um, that's more of a manufacturing uh, webinar. So you're welcome to come to that one. Um, we also have a TXP or Totoro Talent Experience platform demonstration on the 27th. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has any further questions for Sean now. If there's anything at all you'd like to know about the platform or any questions about how to make um, the learning sort of engaging, I wonder if that is one thing, Sean, that you've thought about before. Is like, how do you get people to log on? How do you get people to utilize the system? Do you have to think about that a lot? Yeah, so, it, so unfortunately, if they build it, they, they will come is not the truth. They, we do have to work really hard. So we've had quite a lot of engagement through our platform. So we've got, um, we're working on our notifications so we can tailor notifications to look how we want them to or to say what we want them to say, uh, to try and encourage people to get involved and they'll go to different audiences, so either the learner or the manager. Uh, we have a functionality on our homepage currently, which is like a top, like top courses or most recently added courses to try and promote what's been added there. Uh, we do a monthly roundup within our organisation to share what we've what is new and what's coming up. So again, trying to encourage traffic. And then if that doesn't work, we've always got the direct emails to managers saying, "Have you? Do you know about this? What about your team? Would this be of interest?" And that, to be honest with you, does work quite well to get people um, booked on and to attend or to try different things out. So we have multi omni channel, I'll say. Omni channel. Well, that's the best way. <laughs> and that mon monthly roundup, Sean. How does that work exactly? Is that like a newsletter, or what does that go? Is that on your Totoro site? So the, the it's, we use a bit of a carousel approach on the homepage. So that is on our Totoro site, but we also use our intranet to support us with that. So um, we post it on there at the beginning of every month and it's kind of like a set feature and then we send our organization does a team brief articles so our sessions so managers get together with their team and show, share what is coming up again to try and encourage people to do it and that's about everything across the organization including learning oh, great thanks so much sean is there anything else you'd like to sort of mention from today or anything else you'd like to add before we finish off today's session yeah, no, I think it's just thank you very much for allowing me to speak. I'm just here to share what our experiences are. And um, so I'm hopeful that some people have got some insights and some ideas from it. Likewise, I'd be interested to happy about uh, to learn about your ideas and what you've been doing with it. So, yeah, feel free to connect. Thanks very much, Sean. And Sean's in the Tetra community as well, so you're welcome to connect there. Um, I think your phone number is there as well, Sean, too. Um, you might get some some phone calls as well. Um, okay. but, <laughs> but thanks very much for speaking today, and thanks, Roz, for coming and, and speaking to us about Chambry as well. No problem. Thanks very much for hosting. Much appreciated. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone, and thanks, everyone, for coming along today. Um, we will be running lots more webinars, so you're very welcome to keep coming to them in the future as well. So thanks, everyone, and we'll finish there for today. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Roz. Thank you. Bye-bye.